What's up everyone, Eric Cross here from Fantrax HQ. We're gonna talk another top 25 prospect ranking here today. Now, this one is not one of the sexier systems out there. Very bland system overall, but there is some value to be had when you dig deeper, especially for 2020. So, those in redraft leagues, this will be especially of interest to you. Um, talking about the Pittsburgh Pirates here. And this system got a nice little boost recently, a couple weeks ago with the Starling Marte deal that brought in two new top 10 prospects, shortstop Leo Verpaguero and right-hander Brennan Malone. Talk about one of those two uh, in this video here, both in my top 10. But speaking of that, let me start with that right now. Uh, starting in things off, at number one in the system is gigantic six foot seven shortstop O'Neal Cruz. Then we got outfielder Jared Oliver, right-hander Mitch Keller, shortstop Leo Verpaguero, there's one of the two. Outfielder Travis Swaggerty at number five. Third baseman Cabrian Hayes at six. Right-hander Brennan Malone, the other one, at seven. Another right-hander Quinn Priester at eight. Nine, Alexander Majika, third baseman. And Ji Huan Bay, shortstop, rounds out the top 10. So again, not a really sexy top 10, but there is some value here for sure. Let's start at the top, obviously, with O'Neill Cruz. Uh, he's one of the most intriguing prospects around right now, just because he's a six foot seven shortstop. And he keeps growing too. I look back at my uh, my top 25 Pittsburgh system last year that I wrote up, and I he was at 6'6 then. Now he just had another physical. He's 6'7. He still could keep growing too. Like I, I just joked earlier that he's gonna have his physical next year in spring training. He'll be seven foot two or something. You know, he's still pretty young, so I won't even put it past him and grow another inch or so. But with that said, you know, with these taller, bigger shortstops, the first thing that everyone always thinks about or wonders about is, are they gonna move off a shortstop? Maybe. I'm not putting it 100% either way. I think his, he has plus athleticism, which really helps. And he's got cannon for an arm, so any, any mistakes he can make up with, with that strong arm. So I give it a 50-50 shot. He stays at shortstop long term. He should stay there for now. If he moves off, obviously third base makes a lot of sense with that arm. And wherever he is, he has the offensive profile to fit in, um, especially with his plus, the double plus raw power. Uh, very, um, very powerful left-handed swing. It's a lot of loft on the ball, but as you can probably, you know, figure out with a guy that this size, it's a little bit of length in the swing, some a little bit of mechanical flaws, but he really puts a charge with the ball. The ball explodes off of his bat. Um, I would love to see him get a little more patient approach. I think that would really help. He doesn't have huge strikeout numbers or anything like that, but I think it's a little more patience, waiting for pitches to drive, would really do him big and really, really see those power numbers really pop. I believe so. Um, really high upside with some kinks to work out, but definitely he's a top 50 prospect for Dynasty in my opinion uh, with a lot of room for growth there, so could be a top 25 guy by this time next year. And then right behind him at 2 is a guy that basically embodies this system to a T, and that's Jared Oliva. Uh, 2017 7th round pick. He's just been steadily improving since then. Uh, this is a guy that in 2019 at AA 277, six home runs, 36 steals, 123 games. Speed is plus or better. That's his most noteworthy asset. And then hit tool is an average to above average that he can hit. That 277, I think, is a pretty good you know, benchmark for where he could be long term. That 270 to 280 range. Never going to be a big power guy. I think there's a little more power projection to be had here, but even, even so, 12 to 15 home run guy. But when you factor in you know, a 270, 280 average, 30 plus steals. It's a nice value there. He's got quick hands, nice compact swing from the left side, uh, plus bat speed, all fields approach. He can really you know, spray it into the gap with consistency. So um, it's a very solid all-around prospect. He's already pushing my top 100, and he should be up you know, sometime middle of this year. He'll probably start at AAA, but with Marte gone, there's a giant gap there in center field. I know they just signed a little stop gap, but uh, I think July, right around the All-Star break, I think you know, as long as Alva has a nice showing at at AAA, he should take over um, end the season. It could be, if he gets half season of bats, he could be 15 steals there. So looking for a little mid-season speed boost, keep that name in mind. Uh, at three is uh, Mitch Keller, who had a very up and down roller coaster uh, debut. Uh, 11 starts with the Pittsburgh Pirates last year, 7.13 ERA. That doesn't tell the whole story. You look deeper, 3.19 FIP, 347 XFIP and a 475 Babbitt. That is like ridiculously inflated. I don't gotta tell you that. That is due for some 
huge aggression right there. Uh, the, the FIP and XFIP are more indicative of what type of pitcher he can be. Uh, I'm, I'm lower than most on Mitch Keller for a reason I'll get into in a second here, but I still have him as like a high end number three, uh, low end number two tops type of guy. Um, right around a K per nine. Uh, fastball is about average to plus, throws that in the mid 90s. I think he averaged around 95 miles an hour in his debut with uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, both the curve in the low 80s and the high 80s slider both are above average pitches. Neither one really kind of has, you know, kind of distanced itself as his main out pitch, but both are very good offerings. Uh, but the reason why I have him a little lower is this, I do not like his changeup at all. Yeah, he averaged 91 miles an hour on it in his debut with Pittsburgh. He overthrows it, it's firm, not a lot of velocity separation, so uh, it's, like, it's like a 40 grade offering for me right now. Uh, if you can improve that, I would be much more confident projecting him as a number two starter. But for right now, like I said, he's kind of teetering on two starter, you know, number two, number three starter for me. Um, but with that said, nice bounce back potential here. I think people got to see the, the bloated ERA, kind of look over him on draft day. Don't be one of those people. Uh, it's a nice bounce back potential here in 2020 and a nice late round starting pitcher target for redraft leagues. Uh, and then at four, we have Lieber Paguero, one of the two pieces that came over in the Starling Marte deal. And he's a guy that's really kind of shot up rankings over the last year. Uh, last year in between rookie ball and low A, or short season A I should say, uh, hit 326, five bombs, 11 steals in 60 games. Uh, he was a 2017 signing by the Diamondbacks out of the Dominican Republic. And obviously he came over with, with Brian Malone in that Marte deal. Um, it's mostly a hit speed shortstop. 55 hit, 60 speed. Uh, really solid approach for his age as well. Um, power, he's kind of like in the all of our range power-wise where there's some projection left on a 6-1 frame, but even with that, I think he's, like I said, 12 to 15 home run guy, but that could come with like a 275, 280, 285 average with a fairly strong OBP as well. He's got a good approach, like I said, for his age. So um, I think he could be a nice, maybe like a number two hitter with his profile. Um, good combination of ceiling and floor, and he's on the rise, so... He's a good prospect to target now, as I think his price still is lagging behind where his value really should be, so he's a great dynasty target right now. And then last but not least, we have Key Brian Hayes, where I'm sure some of you, when I listen to my top 10 to start this, probably like, what the heck? Key Brian Hayes at six? Yes, let me explain. I have always been in the mindset that he's a better real life prospect than fantasy. Still in that mindset. And with that said, I still have him in my top 150 overall for Dynasty, so it's not like I'm out on Cabrian Hayes. I'm just not, like, super in love with him like some people are. Um, like I said, he's a better real-life player because he's, he's solid on both sides of the ball. Really good defender, uh, so this mix of offense and defense, he's a, you know, be one of those guys that sticks around in the major leagues for a long time. Um, in 2019, last year, he hit so it was 261, 10 home runs, 13 steals, and 14 attempts in 113 games at AAA. I'd put for on his offensive tools 50 or 55 grade on all of them, but none, none are plus in my opinion. He's kind of a 270, 275 hitter. I think 10 to 15 home runs. Maybe maybe he gets up a little higher than that at some point, but doesn't have a, doesn't really drive the ball in the air a lot. So I don't really see any you know many 20 home run seasons out of him. Maybe he sneaks one of those in too, but I think he's supposed to be like in the low to mid teens there. Steals, I think he could be like an 18 to 25 steel guy, high teens, low 20s there. So, again, really solid all around profile. Um, I think he could be a guy that, you know, you draft mid to late rounds every year, happy with your investment. He's not a building block for your fantasy team. For the rest of my top 25, with blurbs and video and whatnot, um, check out the entire article over on fantraxhq.com. Make sure you check out our draft kit as well. Get a lot of stuff pumping out daily there. So if you've got a draft coming up, make sure you head over there and check out all the good stuff we have to offer before you head into your draft room. And then make sure you move your league over to Fantrax and subscribe to this YouTube channel. So got a lot, a lot of good stuff on the way, both on the fantasy platform side here in the video channel. It's a lot of good stuff on the way. So stay tuned for more. I'll catch you next time.